Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick, and I'm talking with Michaela Duhat of MetaSwitch. Michaela, good to see you again. I can't believe a year's gone by since we last sat somewhere like this and talked about stuff. Things have moved on by a year. NFE is a year older, as we all are. Um, I'd like to begin by asking you, what do you think is the most used use case for NFE so far? There are quite a few, and we've been talking, you know, um, clear core or uh, sort of enterprise. And from everything that I'm seeing and reading, um, it is clear for us that one of the, the best ones, it's uh, what we call the virtual CPE. First of all, what is a virtual CPE and why is it the best used use case right now? A virtual CPE, it's a virtual customer premise equipment, which is a little bit tricky uh, if you think about the acronym because it's still a customer premise box but it's virtual, right? So it's still some hardware, but it's virtual. Uh, but I'll explain. Um, the, vir the box itself, you still need a CPU-based box. So you still need the power to run virtual functions. And uh, the beauty about the virtual CPU use case is that it makes um, use of the best of the NFV world, which means that you're actually running several functions on the same platform, on the same compute platform, uh, and it's much more effective, cost effective, for both the service provider as well as the enterprise. So it's sort of, uh, it's a win-win-win situation, if you wish, um, on all sides. On the uh, service provider, clearly it's, uh, they can now address a market that they previously couldn't. Uh, it's the SMB market, which is very tricky, because these guys, first of all, buy stuff, buy boxes from different, you know, um, outfits, whether it's a distributor, whether it's a system integrator, you know, the Cisco, maybe the service provider. So it's a very segmented market. Uh, one of the uh, biggest issues that service providers had to servicing this market is the fact that they need um, routers, they need firewalls, they need accelerators, they need uh, switches, they need uh, uh, desktop stuff. So for each of that, they should have sent or they have to send a truckload to, to do that, install support. And it's not cost you know, effective. So in many cases, they sort of took their hands off this market and couldn't serve it well. What the virtual CP does, it actually provides them an in into an otherwise very hard to penetrate market. It sounds, Michael, as though it's a sizable market then. It is a great market. It's a, um, it's a very sizable market. And it's a market that uh, people understand. Um, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, it goes to the IT guys who know virtualization and understand and like, and you know, they've been doing that because they are the IT guys. Um, it goes to um, you know, providing a much more cost-effective way, a much more easier way to get control of what you want from an IT perspective, because I can now go and say, okay, I'm now wanting this router to, to download as a virtual function, but tomorrow I don't need that and I only need a firewall, and the next day I need something else, so it gives them the control that they usually want. Now, Metaswitch has carved out quite a place for itself in NFV. What are you doing in terms of the virtual CPE? I think we are doing quite a bit, actually, <laughs> and uh, that's why uh, we love this space. Um, it's the uh, opportunity for us to actually uh, put to use our best, one of our best uh, assets, which is the virtual SBC. And um, what happens is that, again, from an SBC perspective, uh, obviously it's all about voice. If you think about what has happened on virtual CPEs, uh, it's all about data because that's what people are doing. And what's happening now, it's this intersection of, okay, I have all this data VNFs, it's time for me to expand that to add voice. And this is exactly where Metaswitch can bring its best asset and you know, its best value, which is a virtual SBC. We've looked at the size of the market for the, for the virtual CPE. We've looked at voice. How? It's funny, isn't it, really? Because voice was always, you know, the thing that, the tail that wagged the dog, as it were, it was the most important thing. Then it became less important and voice traffic dropped off. Is voice traffic returning now or is it, is it, is it less than it was but still important uh, or think, is it more important? I think it's as important as it always was. People still talk, people still <laughs> pick up the phone. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people have a hard phone on their desks, especially on, you know, you're talking about SMBs. 
you're talking about a lawyer office and about a um, doctor's office or a retail, all these people have to still pick up the phone and talk to their customers. So uh, by no means I think it's uh, anything less. Um, I don't know if it's, it's the same type of communication that we always uh, wanted to have. What this particular uh, technology provides is the ability to pull it all together in the most efficient way, really. So uh, it sort of brings the, the data and voice together, which uh, has been from a carrier perspective for quite a while now, you know. Mm -hmm. And it has been also from a, uh, if you look at enterprises, they have done that uh, if you look at SIP trunking, right? So SIP trunking, it's a perfect use case in which enterprises are already using IP transport for their voice uh, traffic. Mm -hmm. However, to do so, they still have to separate uh, boxes. One, it's the SBC that takes that traffic and puts it over IP, and still they, you have the data you know, traffic, and yeah, the voice traffic goes on top of the data traffic, but you still have two different boxes. And now with the virtual CP, you can bring all that together. Now, NFV is continuing to mature. We seem to be seeing the end of, which is quite, a, quite an impressive hype cycle that's lasted you know, quite a long time. But that seems to be dying away to some extent. And we're getting into reality mm -hmm. now. So it's taken longer in many ways for the sort of carrier grade NFV to, to hit its mark. Um, and people have been saying it's going to take 18 months for the past three and a half years, as you well know. Um, what is the top of the agenda for MetaSwitch now? as NFE matures, what's next? So first of all, maturity comes, you know, to some later than others, <laughs> you know. So yeah. uh, NFE still has some, some maturing to do. Um, and uh, one of the uh, topics, obviously, is the carrier grade and the high availability uh, and reliability of clouds. And how, how do you do that, the, again, the most efficient way to take advantage of the um, cloudification, uh, do you need one cloud? Do you need two clouds? Do you uh, still go with um, you know hot standby or do you go active active? Do you go one plus one or do you go n plus one or do you go n plus k? Um, then you have the whole aspect of performance, right? Uh, NFV, while it's wonderful when you have a lot of uh, functions. Uh, still adds a lot of complexity if you're looking at one function in particular because you have you know several layers now as opposed to before maybe you had the bar bare metal and then you know the function itself so there is still a lot of performance uh, improvement that can be done and we are seeing that uh, quite a bit in in all components of uh, the NFV ecosystem but putting all that together still it will require some time. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure, thank you very much for having me. Thank you.